so in this presentation i will describe describe about the nervous system uh, then as we know the nervous system is one of the most important component of our body and it is the one of one of the most important system of our body it is responsible for collecting the information from the external environment so that the person or a subject can be aware of the external environment so on the basis of the information received from the different sensory receptors these informations are processed in the nervous system for generation of the motor impulses so every nervous system is consisting of three major component number one is sensory motor portion which is responsible for collecting the sensory inputs from the external environment as well as from the internal environment of our body and the second most important portion is the central nervous system which is consisting of analyzing the information whatever received by these receptors and third one is the motor output portion and this portion is responsible for consisting of or for generation of the impulses who against the sensory input or they can auto generate some information about the thinking process of the subject so that the motor activities can be executed so the sensory portion the function of the sensory portion uh, is done by the different types of receptors they are responsible for collecting the informations from the environment integrative portions are done by the different neurons which are present within the central nervous system which is consisting of the brain and spinal cord and the motor output portion it the, the neurons these neurons are responsible for sending the information towards the different effector organs like different muscles or glands and these glands might be of endocrine and exocrine types so these are the functions of the this is the in brief the functions of the nervous system so let us see so what actually we told that the sensory part of the nervous system is collecting the information uh, and they are responsible for transportation of the information and uh, from the receptors also of the entire body surface and from some deep structure of our body and the motor part of the nervous system it remains connected with the effector organs these effector organs are nothing but the muscles as i told earlier these that means it sends the information for contraction of the appropriate skeletal muscles throughout the body it is responsible for contraction of the smooth muscles of the internal organs of our body we know that the internal organs which are present within our body they are controlled by the uh, smooth muscles so these smooth mu smooth muscles contraction are also under the control of the nervous system then the secretion of the different chemical substances by uh, by both exocrine and endocrine glands are also under the control of the nervous system so on receiving stimulus from the different part of the body uh, by the sensory receptors the informations are sent to the central nervous system for, for processing and from after processing the information is sent to the effector organ for execution of it so until or unless the execution of the information or the execution of the uh, impulse generated by the motor system is motor nervous system motor part of the nervous system is completed we cannot see any effect of the nervous system externally so this is a picture where you can find that the we can collect the information about the pain cold and warmed by the receptors uh, which are present in the skin they also can collect the information about the press pressure touch and all these information are passes towards the uh, towards the brain via different afferent nerves and uh, through the spinal cord and sometimes they are also analyzed in the spinal cord also and they ultimately they are sent to the sensory part of the nervous system so then what actually happens once the informations are received oh uh, just another type of receptors are also there that either there are some receptors which are present within the muscles and the golgi tendon apparatus they are responsible for collecting the informations about the contraction of the muscles and how much it has been contracted that information is also sent to the central nervous system for processing and another type of kinesthetic receptors are present in the joints they can analyze or they can receive the information about the status of the contraction of the joints so once these informations are collected they are sent to the central nervous system that is the sensory part of the nervous system for 
further processing. So after processing of the information in the central nervous system, the motor area actually generates some impulses which are said to the affected organ via the same uh, the, uh, via the afferent roots that is the afferent nerve fibers they are uh, they are reaching to the affected organs like muscles or glands for execution of their activity so the afferent nerve fibers are responsible for carry carrying the information away from the central nervous system whereas the efferent nerve fiber are responsible for carrying the information towards the central nervous system so now let us see what are the important uh, role of the nervous system so number one uh, uh, another important functions uh, we have already discussed about the sensory part uh, motor part uh, or motor functions of the nervous system so next is the processing of the information that is the integ integrative function so integrative function is one of the most important function of the nervous system and because this function is responsible for taking the decision about the sensory input so once the important sensory information excites our mind it's immediately channeled to the proper integration integrative part of our body uh, or sorry integrative part of the nervous system and the motor regions of the brain to cause a desired response so these integrative functions are responsible for for generation of the desired response along with these functions uh, the central nervous system also also plays an important role by storage of information so whatever the information are being received by the sensory part of the nervous system that can be stored for future use so the information is stored for future control and motor activities and for the use of the thinking process uh, concentration uh, contraction of the different muscles in the internal organs as well as different structures of our body so the most storage occurs in the cerebral cortex cerebral cortex is the region where the maximum information can be stored but even the basal regions of the brains and the spinal cord also can store to some small amount of informations but the main information is stored within the cerebral cortex mainly so cerebral cortex is responsible for memorization and it is uh, it so that the information can be used for future use so if we go through the classifications of the nervous system it can be classified into two major component number one is central nervous system or cns it consisting of the brain and spinal cord and peripheral nervous system or pns it consisting of the cranial and spinal nerves and their ramifications so and that means their branchings all the chemical uh, uh, cranial and spinal nerves and their branchings are belongs to the peripheral nervous system and they are con they are consisting of certain type of peripheral ganglions there are some ganglions uh, where the cell bodies of the neuron are accumulated within our body so these are the part of the peripheral nervous system and the peripheral nervous system again divided into two parts number one is somatic nervous system it is responsible for controlling the contraction of the skeletal muscle so it is responsible for generation of the voluntary um, generation of the impulses so that the skeletal muscles can contract voluntarily and autonomic nervous system it is the nothing but it is it is consisting of the some part of the peripheral nervous system which is responsible for generation generation which is responsible for generation of the uh, um, autonomic control of the different organs so sympathetic nervous system uh, it is consisting of of uh, sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system they are the parts of the autonomic nervous system they consist the neurons that innervates the secretory glands cardiac and smooth muscles and are therefore concerned preliminary with the control of the internal environment so autonomic nervous system it controls the activity of the different visceral organs so that uh, these organs can be regula regulated automatically so this is a structure of the central nervous system brain and this is the spinal cord and these are the different afferent spinal nerves so now we can go through the different part of the peripheral nervous system that is the cranial nerves cranial nerves we are having the 12 pairs of cranial nerves uh, one is number one is olfactory number two is optic oculomotor trochlear trigeminal abducens facial auditory glossopharyngeal vagus spinal accessory and hypoglossal 
so they are originating from the different parts of our brain and that's why they are called as cranial nerves so for first first two nerves that is the olfactory optics olfactory nerve and optic nerve they are originating from the forebrain third and fourth cranial nerve that is the oculomotor and trochlear they are originating from the midbrain fifth sixth seventh and eighth that is trigeminal abducens facial and auditory they are originating from the pons or they are remains connected with the pons next is glossopharyngeal and vagus spinal accessory and hypoglossus all these four nerves are i uh, remains they remains connected with the medulla oblongata among these the olfactory and optic they are sensory in nature oculomotor and trochlear they are motor in nature trigeminals they are mixed abducens they are motor and pon abducens is uh, uh, re originating from the pons it is motor in nature facial nerves is mixed in nature that means it may be sensory and motor in nature then auditory nerves it is the sensory nerve purely sensory nerve it remains connected with the pons then medulla oblongata is mixed uh, in medulla oblongata glossopharyngeal and vagus is mixed that means they might be of sensory and motor type and uh, the spinal accessory nerves and hypoglossals they are of the motor type so these are the cranial nerves and we are having the 31 pairs of spinal nerves also they are the component of the peripheral nervous system Bo all these uh, spinal nerves are sensory and motor in nature and there are 8 pairs of cervical nerves 12 pairs of thoracic nerves 5 pairs of lumbar nerves and 5 pairs of sacral nerves and 1 pair of coccygeal nerve so in my next lecture i will describe about different parts of the brain Okay, thank you.